Hello, welcome to the second free course in the Comms Simplified series. And just in case you don't know what the Comms Simplified series is, it's a series that I'm doing to teach communications and public relations professionals the basic skills in communications. So the first course was on communications planning, which you can find here on YouTube. Just check my YouTube page. And then the second course is on seller, which is on brand strategy. You'll find the details in the information section that accompanies this video. Today, I'm going to be looking at how to write a high quality press release. And this is something that, um, it's an interesting topic for me because first of all, as a communications and public relations professional, writing is something that you absolutely have to do and you have to master it. Being able to write for different audiences, being able to write in different mediums, is so critical to know. And one of the things that you must master how to write is the press release. Now, the debates as to whether the press release is still relevant today or not, I'm not going to go into that debate, but I can tell you that it is still widely used and it is very important to just know how to write one that gets you the best results. And that's what this course is all about. I'm going to talk you through a very simplified way to go about it. And that's why this series has the title Come Simplified. I like things simplified. So I'm going to break it down and hopefully you'll be able to see the process in which you can create and build your own press release and use that going forward without any stress or any challenges. So if you're ready, I'm ready to get, to get right into it. Okay, but before we go into the topic or the focus of today, let me introduce myself. I'm not going to assume that everybody watching knows who this is. <laughs> My name is Adedoyin Jayasini, and I'm the co-founder of the Comms Avenue. And the Comms Avenue is a capacity building and networking platform for communications professionals across Africa and beyond. We currently have over 800 communications professionals from 17 African countries. Country. So if you're a communications PR marketing professional in Africa and you want to join us, we have programs, networking events, virtual, in-person, in different countries across Africa. Please get involved. Uh, the website is www.thecomsavenue.com. Again, I'll put it in the description that comes with this video. I'm a communications advisor. I love, love, love being a communications advisor, working with organizations to develop strategy, oversee execution, and I'm a trainer. I love to teach. Okay, I know I said love before, but this one I love, 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 love. <laughs> I actually do enjoy teaching. Uh, it's something that I'm really passionate about, sharing my knowledge, and it's one of the reasons that I pioneered the Com Simplified series. I'm a lover of food, books, music, and God. Okay, enough about me. You're not here to listen to me talk about me. Okay, so let's go into the topic of writing press releases. So these are some general things that I want you to know when you want to write a press release. First of all, you need to adopt the inverted pyramid journalistic approach. I won't spend too much time talking about it now because I have another slide that is dedicated to that. So the second thing is ideally, and you're going to see ideally, usually in this um, presentation a lot, because you also have to bear in mind the context and the terrain in which you are working with. So ideally, your press release should not be longer than one page. And that's even because we all know that we're living in a world where there's information overload, the journalist that you're writing to or you're pitching to or you're sending your press release to is receiving press releases from a gazillion other people. So the person must be able to open the document and get the gist of what you are saying. So that goes to the next point of it must be very easy to digest at a glance. If you, I can imagine a reporter opening a press release that is three pages long. Where is he going to start from? The busy day and the things that he has to do. So the reason why you should think about making it as concise and straight to the point as possible is so that you get the attention. It's just the same thing when I teach people on, on writing or storytelling. You must grab them from your headline, from your first paragraph. You must go straight to the point. You can't beat about the bush. People have things to do. So it's the same idea that is just being brought into another medium. 
And then, so your headline should be brief and it should be compelling. Again, I'll talk more about this um, as we go further down in the presentation, but please bear that in mind, brief and compelling. There's a caveat to this, which is that, so for example, I have written headlines for press releases that have been a bit longer than the norm because of the angle that is being emphasized. So you can see the last points of the content of the press release must support the angle chosen. There must be an angle and even point, the point before that is that the press release must have an angle that the re reporter will find interesting. There needs to be an angle. What makes this story so special? The issue that people have a press release is, is that it's just used just like that any in, for anything, right? So you want to announce that there's a new appointment, there's a press release being sent out. You want to announce that the organization just acquired new property there's a press release being sent out. However, you should use it more strategically to announce things that are important. But beyond being important, it's also think, how is this even newsworthy? Because that is what is going to get the interest of the journalist in publishing it. And a, another caveat, this goes for terrains where earned media is the case. In terms of paid media, you will still follow this process, but you may not pay attention to um, things like making it newsworthy, quote and unquote, because you're paying for it. However, the flip side is if it is not newsworthy and it is published, then the final audience is not going to be interested in it. So either ways, it still pays you to make sure that it is newsworthy. I can spend the whole day talking about that, but <laughs> we'll talk more about it. But these are the general things that you, you would need to know when you're approaching your press release. Okay, so let's talk about the inverted pyramid structure. So journalists use this structure and this, um, the diagram there shows you pretty much what it is. So the inverted pyramid structure is that your most important information comes first. And the most important information answers who, what, when, where, why, and how. That is it. And then the next, the bottom layer is the important details to support what came before. And then other general information, um, less important details can go in the end. And so the idea is when people come into reading this article, news report, or whatever it is, they get the crux of the matter immediately. So in case you lose them in the middle, They've gone away with the most important thing, the thing that you want them to know. So imagine if you left the most newsworthy information at the end, the person has gone through and is in the middle of like, oh, I'm not interested in this. However, if you started with the most newsworthy information, then you catch their interest. And it's, it's more likely that they will get to the end of that content, whether it's a press release, whether it's a news article or story. So think about it. When you want to write a press release, what is the most important information that needs to come out? What do people need to know? Give that information first and then begin to feed the other details in a scale of importance. Please don't forget this is very, very, very crucial. Okay, so let's go, let's go practical. I love practical stuff. So what I have done is I have done a press release template to write the press release and you'll be able to download it. I'll give you details of how you can download it by the end of this course. And I'm going to, what I've done is I have broken down the different areas of the press release and I'm going to just talk through them so that you can see, you know, the thought process and how you would build your own press release. Okay, so let me give you the background for the press release. So the organization is called Max Mobile, and they're releasing a new smartphone in their flagship mobile phone series. Now, remember I said to you that your press release must have an angle. So the angle for this press release is that the brand is bringing the best of both worlds of functionality and design, pushing beyond the existing industry barriers. So within this industry, for example, or this terrain in which Max Mobile operates, smartphone brands just focus on functionality. So Max Mobile is actually doing something in terms of bringing cutting edge design to match the functionality. So you can see that is the angle. That is what is going to make it interesting. This is something that is not being done in the ecosystem or terrain. Again, this is an example. I know this, I know we have Samsung and iPhone and all of that, but in that ecosystem, it is absolutely new and that's the angle. And you will see how in the press release, I brought that to life to 
get the interest of the people reading it, whether it's the journalist or the final audience that would be reading the published press release. Okay, so let us start. The beginning is the headline. Remember, we said it, it needs to be concise, it needs to be compelling. So, Max Mobile unveils its premium flagship smartphone, Ultra Code A. It's straight to the point. You understand the information that needs to be derived from this press release. You understand the purpose, you understand what it's about. Even without reading the content, you know, oh, Max Mobile has released a new smartphone in the ultra code series so your headline essentially just pulls people in to your press release it's just like the headline for a blog post or the headline for a social media caption so you make it short make it compelling and make sure it captures the main point of your press release i couldn't have written here max mobile so if i'd written here max mobile cementing its position as a thought leader they are doing that inadvertently by pioneering this phone that has both functionality and design but that is not the crux of this press release i want to let you guys know that this phone is out and people need to know about it why do they need to know about it and why they need to get it so make sure that the headline highlights the main points of the press release so people know what to expect after the the headline is the first paragraph. But before I even go to the first paragraph, you will see there that it has Accra, May 19, 2022. So that's the date line where you put the location and the date. And it's important in the global world that we live in so that the journalist or the person reading really has context as to where the story is coming from, where this organization is operating from and just just general context to be to be honest that's what it does so here it says max mobile launches the latest addition to its ultra smartphone series the ultra code a today created to meet the needs of the tech savvy 21st century smartphone user through its blend of functionality and design remember angle <laughs> the ultra code a will be available in the africa asia and select international markets now your first paragraph is your lead. Remember the inverted pyramid structure. That is the lead and the important facts need to go there. Remember the W's. So let's break down the W's in this first paragraph. Who? Max Mobile is the who. What? They are launching the Ultra Code A. When are they doing it? They're doing it today. Where? Africa, Asia and select international markets. Why are they doing it? To meet the needs of the tech savvy 21st century smartphone user. Whether your organization is doing an event, a conference, launching something, uh, launching a new office, whatever it is, answer who, what, when, where, why in your first paragraph because that is what people are going to remember or that's what is going to make them continue to read your press release or say, mm, I find this very interesting. Let's go further. Let me continue reading this. And then after the first paragraph, you have the supporting paragraphs. Now, there isn't so much in terms of how many supporting paragraphs should you have. That's up to you. But remember that the ideal length is one page. So you don't want to have too many supporting paragraphs. But every supporting paragraph that you have, whether it is two or it's one or it's three, must build upon each other. Make sure that you're not repeating the same information. Make sure that you're not saying, so you know how sometimes you have the second paragraph, paragraph three is, is a rephrase of what has been in the previous paragraph. That's that's a waste of, of, of your time and the journalist's time. So make sure that the supporting paragraph gives more details and fleshes out the information in the first paragraph. So coming back to Max Mobile press release. So here you can see we're now talking about the ultra code a that is combining best of both worlds of the previous series that max mobile has but the important point here is that it is giving a sophisticated mobile phone experience without compromising performance functionality and design so you can see how it is tying back into the angle and then you have to definitely highlight the feature so that people can see mm, cleaner color palette it has soft white menus it's looking nice aesthetically and then finally you then paint the picture of how it looks visually rich glass metal then the battery with the, yeah you get the point <laughs> so make it concise and you can see that each sentence 
is giving fresh information. I'm not repeating what was said in the previous sentence. So sentence one, for example, focuses on the experience of using the phone, while sentence two is on the feature. And then the last sentence is on the design, which then ties back to the angle of this press release. So showcasing that, look, this is truly a blend of functionality and design. And the goal writing is, is by the end of it, I want the person to know that, ah, ultra code A, functionality plus design. So even when they're writing their stories, those keywords will come up. So that's another thing you need to think about when they're writing their stories. Because again, depending on the terrain you work in, some people would uh, copy your press release or post it, publish it verbatim. And some people will do some sort of story around it. So if they copy it verbatim, that's good. But if they want to do some sort of story around it, because you're using the right keywords that's tied to the angle, you're sure that they're going to be using the right key messages in that story as well. So think about your angle and think about each sentence very, very, very strategically. What information? Why is this information? Why this wording um, especially? So still on the supporting paragraph. So this particular press release has two supporting paragraphs. Now, what I did with the third paragraph was to make it lead nicely into the quotes because sometimes you have supporting paragraph one, supporting paragraph two, and then a quote that just seems to go left because you know you create the flow but then the quote just goes left so there has to be some sort of flow and when you read the press read the full thing when you download it you will see the flow that i'm talking about so in this third paragraph i said with its premium look and enhanced security feature this phone showcases the Max Mobile's innovative abilities and sustained leadership position in the technology industry. So that really cements all that I had said in the previous paragraph in how this brand is an industry leader. And generally for all your paragraphs, between four to five lines each is what you should be targeting. And remember to always go straight to the point. Don't beat about the bush. Don't use flowery, <laughs> flowery language. Just make sure that you're passing across the points as quickly, as succinctly as possible. Now, let's take a look at the quote. Every press release should have a quote because your quote is your opportunity to bring a human angle element into that press release. And it's, it's, it helps you to say something. So when you read a press release and you read the quotes, you read it in the voice of the person speaking as opposed to, oh, this is news coming from this organization. So you humanize, that's the word, you humanize the organization. And typically the quote comes from the CEO, spokesperson, some senior executive. So for Max Mobile, it's the CEO, Fred, and, his, and this is the quote. While Max Mobile is well known for developing functional smartphones, the Ultra Code A has now shifted us into the realm of design. <laughs> the Ultra Code A is not just about functionality. It is also about creating a memorable user experience through design. So again, you see how this quote buttresses the angle and how it flows with everything that has been said before. You know, I cannot come and bring a quote and start talking about, oh, Max Mobile's market share is... XYZ and the tech guys have made sure that we maintain our market share. It doesn't flow with the contents of this press release. It's an important information, but not important in the context of this press release. Remember, this press release is not about Max Mobile's position in the industry. It is about the fact that they have just released a new smartphone. So typically, you will be the one to draft this, this quote. However, there's some organizations where the CEO would want to do it or somebody else wants to do it. In the typical scenarios, you draft it, they review it, they make some changes and they go and, and you go for it, you include it. However, if it is not going to be drafted by you, please, 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 let me add one more please, please make sure that you provide guidance because sometimes what CEOs think will be important may not be so important. While the CEO may be thinking about like the former example, market share, what you want to promote, the messaging is quite different. So you need to let them know the direction of the press release, the angle. So it's just prep them on, okay, please give me a quote that speaks to the, the pioneering that brings together functionality and design, something like that, so that you don't have a quote that you cannot use or that just throws your press release off balance. 
So after the quote is then the call to action. For more information about the Ultra Code A and its features, please visit the dedicated landing page. Da, 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 da. Please make sure that you hyperlink this very, very important. People forget. And as you hyperlink, make sure that the link is active. <laughs> make sure that it is accurate. You know, it might seem like, oh, this is a no-brainer, but trust me, it's, it's very easy to forget. And make sure that your call to action tells people what they need to do next. Do you need them to visit? So this one is visit this website. For some press release is sign up, register, download, um, whatever it is. Just make sure that you're specific about what the call to action is. And just to reiterate, put a direct and accurate link for whatever that call to action is for the press release. And then you have the boilerplate about the company. This is an opportunity to then tell the journalist about this company. Now it's a summary. It's not, you know, I've seen, I've seen some about that. It's like eight, 10 pages. Nobody's going to read that. Not eight, 10 pages, eight, 10 lines. Nobody's going to read that. So make sure it's a summary. Ideally, it should be 100 words. Have I written boilerplates that are longer than 100 words? Yes. However, there was a reason to that. I was telling a story and, you know, I thought it needed more than 100 words. But the most important thing really is highlight the things that strategically positions and promotes that organization within the industry. So imagine if you're sending this to the guys in the tech, um, tech desk, for example, they want to know that this person is a formidable player in this industry. So for Max Mobile, uh, talked about their headquarters, when they started, how they've evolved, how many models of phone they have, how many countries they're selling, and you know the fact that this is a global um, mobile smartphone player that's operating from Accra, but they're selling all across the world. So they're not hard and fast truth about what information you want, you should put there, but you should just think about this information how does it position this organization? In what light? With respect to our competitors, is it showing our uniqueness? Is it showing our competitive advantage? Is it showing how we are different? So that is what you think about. Don't just put the generic about us um, from your website and just paste it there. Think strategically about what, what goes in there. And then finally is the media contact. Now, depending on your location, there are certain locations where, oh, I should mention one more thing, actually. Forgive me. I'm going to go back to this slide. I wanted to highlight that. So you can see here, I put a picture. Now, it's nice to actually include a picture, but some people don't because you want to attach. So maybe you want to attach images of the phone itself, maybe mock-ups and campaign shots that have been done with the, the, the mobile phone, and then you will attach it to the email. But you know, one image, it just makes your press release more interesting and easy on the eye. So think about incorporating some sort of image within the press release. Again, it still needs to be one page, so you figure out how you're going to do that. <laughs> okay, so we're at the final part. So I was saying that in some places, people don't put a media contact because if you're going to send it via email, you can put your media contact in the body of the email. But this is my thinking about it. You don't know where this press release will or can go. You, you just don't know. So you, you want... You want that anybody that opens it gets the information and has a means to access somebody to get more information. So if it, a third party journalist that you didn't even reach out to stumbles on this press release and they're like, oh, this is very interesting. Let me reach out to somebody in this organization. How are they going to do it? They're not going to go on LinkedIn to um, connect with the CEO, except it's like very juicy news. So that's why your media contacts is actually very important. So journalists can reach out to you for further information to clarify something or maybe they're even interested in interviewing your CTO for example take us through the thought process as to why you decided to merge functionality and design together so there write your name or ideally it should be you or somebody in the comms public relations office but I'm also bearing in mind that organization operates differently but then you put the name the position telephone number and email address a worst case scenario just the email address, whatever works in the terrain that you're in. But most importantly, let it be the contact of somebody that is going to be available and responsive. So, so important. Okay, so before I go to the slide that is next, I want to go back to just reiterate um, the key points. So you're looking at number one, 
your headline, which needs to be short, which needs to be compelling. Number two, you're looking at your first paragraph, which is your lead, and must answer the first five Ws. Then you are also looking at number three, which is the supporting paragraphs, which then give further context and information to what you've provided in the first paragraph, concise, fresh information. And then you're also looking at how does this flow and link up with my quote. Then number four, you're looking at the quote itself. Does it align? Is it passing valuable information? Number, I forget one number I stopped now, number five, <laughs> the call to action. What do people need to do? Make sure that you have an active link, a direct active link. And this thing about direct link, you know, sometimes, like for example, I could have put here www.maxmobile.com. It doesn't take them to the page for the phone. Who's going to be looking for it, right? <laughs> and then try as much as possible to include a picture. And then number six, you have the boilerplate, which is about the organization. And remember, you're highlighting strategic information that positions that company within the ecosystem, within the industry. And finally, you have the media contact. So I hope that you, this was straightforward for you to see how it builds up and understanding the important elements of a press release. You'll be able to find the full release in this template, and this is where you can download it. And if you look at this image, that's on the right. You will see those those uh, dialogue boxes. I've put commentary on each segment. So that's why you can see that it's highlighted so that you know what goes where. So when you're editing, it's almost like you have my voice in your head saying, okay, this is what you should put here. This is what, so you don't have to always refer to this video. That template on its own gives you the direction step by step, paragraph by paragraph. This is what you should put here. This is what you should do. So please download it from bit.ly forward slash CSS press release template. Or you can go to my website, www.adidoenjaising.com and you also find it. But this is a more, you know, we're speaking about direct links. So this is a more direct link. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful for you. I hope that I have simplified the process of writing a high quality, compelling press release that helps you to stand out and helps you to accurately and succinctly pass across the message that you want to pass across to your stakeholders or the media, for example, your target audience. As always, please get in touch with me. I love feedback. I love comments. Uh, please get in touch with me. This is my website, www.adidoenjaisimi.com. You can follow me on LinkedIn, adidoenjaisimi, or you can also send me an email, let's talk at thecomsavenue.com. And you can also catch some of my other series, uh, some of my other videos in this series. The next one, which I'm totally, totally looking forward to is the video series for those who are in the early years of their career in communications and public relations. Thanks to those that have done the survey. I'm looking forward to doing the recording and there's going to be a recording, um, a video like this, a YouTube video. There's going to be a Zoom session and as always, if you've followed my courses so far, you know I like to give templates and guides. So expect one of those, but that you'll be able to use it to navigate your journey in comms from the beginning to at least when you're five years in. So I'm, I'm totally looking forward to that. But before then, if you have any questions, anything you want me to clarify, you can drop a comment here on YouTube or you can find me on any of those platforms and I'll be happy and willing to answer your questions. Or if you want me to come and do this for your team, just let me know. <laughs> As I've said before, I love to teach, I love to train, and I can do this literally all day. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next course. Bye.